Lord, your Lordships will be aware that during the decade that I have been privileged to serve in your Lordship's house, I have very carefully avoided speaking on what I consider to be clearly party political issues. Following the precedent of others who have been Speaker of the House of Commons, I have endeavoured to speak on those issues which are not clearly belonging to one side or the other. I believe that the destiny of the British people is bigger than any party and that this House has a, an equal responsibility with the other House to give careful consideration to what is at stake. Firstly, I am of opinion that those who support my strict and those who oppose it will agree on this. The cause for Britain will never be the same again if this treaty is ratified. No good, uh, noble lords, I'm speaking with such enthusiasm, the noble lord Richard, the noble lord Jenkins of Hill Head, both, of course, have much more experience of Europe than I have, because they both are part of the bureaucracy of Europe and of the institution there. And when I, I almost felt that I ought not to stand between the noble lady and Lord Jenkins, who himself is hardly in a position to talk about inconsistency. <laughs> And I, I hope he understands what I mean. <laughs> there's a message in where he is sitting. Same as there's a message where I am sitting. Now, because I believe that the sovereignty of our country is at stake, I feel obliged to address your Lordship's house and say this, power under my strict is to be transferred from the elected representatives of our people to Europe, where we will be a permanent minority, 15%. Go to Germany, look for a job. Go to Italy, look for a job. Go to France, look for a job. They will look to the High Court of Parliament here to take the economic measures that we believe are in our national interest. And one would have gathered from the speeches to which we have listened with respect, may I say, to the noble lord and the government front bench, his was the least enthusiastic uh, of, of the three to which I listened. But since we uh, joined the community, we have had a net trading deficit of no less than 81 billion pounds to which might be added a net deficit in our community contributions of over 13 billion pounds, making all told a deficit for this country with the community since we joined of the best part of 95 billion pounds. And it's interesting to note the 70% of the world's trade 
is still conducted between English speaking countries. The noble Lord Jenkins of Hillhead <coughs> scolded the noble lady who is following me in this debate for quoting Claire Martley. May I quote Winston Churchill? 1953. Many a time that great leader of our nation was prophetic before the war and during the war. I served on the opposite benches to him for 15 years in another place. But in 1953, he said, we are with Europe, but not of it. We are linked, but not compromised. We are associated, but not absorbed. And we should, and should European statesmen address us and say, shall we speak for thee? We would reply, nay, sir. For we dwell among our own people. The long, proud history of the House of Commons and of your Lordship's House is something very precious. The dignity of our nation is wrapped up in the history of our people. And therefore, who should decide Scorn poured on a referendum. Yet, the noble Lord Callahan will know, we had a referendum over the piffling issue of that non-legislative assembly in Wales. We had, and it was thought essential, Parliament couldn't decide. The government decided the people must design because the Constitution was affected and we all know that the Constitution is very much affected today. In, uh, in the first referendum that took us into Europe, we had an assurance from all the leaders that our sovereignty would never be in question. And we have been led inch by inch by inch. And now they tell us we've gone too far. We can't pull back. I believe in this country. And I think that the British people are equal with the French and the Danes in their ability to measure where their interests lay. This is a matter where the High Court of Parliament should say to the people, this is our advice, that because we are deciding for those who are yet unborn, let the people as a whole decide. Britain wants a referendum and she deserves it.